The race to replace convicted New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez. The point starts right now. Congressman Andy Kim is a Democratic candidate for senator from New Jersey. I want to start right in and talking about taxes. Donald Trump has been gaining some traction by proposing, and I guess you would say flirting with the idea of eliminating the income tax and instead um, depending on tariffs on goods that are coming in from the country to fund the government. It's something that actually happened in the 1900s in this country. I wonder how you feel about that. It's a good idea, a bad idea. Is it um, something that's not economically feasible, or could it work? Oh, no, it's it's not something that can work. I mean, we're talking about a situation here where if he increases tariffs across you know, all these different goods that he's talking about, all that's going to do is increase the cost to the American people. We're going to be the ones bearing the brunt of that. He keeps saying that other countries are going to pay for it. That's not true. You know, that's going to make it harder and harder for consumers, make it more challenging, and, and certainly going to also strain the government's ability to be able to raise the resources needed to be able to do a lot of the programs that we want to do. So that's not a good idea. But, you know, to a lot of people who may be not as informed about tax policy as you are, it might be an appealing thought to say, I never have to pay any income taxes. No, look, I mean, that's exactly what Donald Trump has been so good at in terms of just, you know, not caring at all about what it actually means to govern. And I think part of the problem is he's not interested in that. We saw that over the last four years of his first term. And that's what I think is so dangerous right now. You know, people have to look past the fact that he's making so many empty promises that he can't deliver on. And it, things that if he did deliver, Wrong would be very damaging to our country. So would a text like doing something like that where you would depend on tariffs, um, would that be regressive? Would that make people, you know, everybody, people who have less income would be harder hit because they'd be paying more for consumer goods that they could probably ill afford to pay? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're talking about, you know, whether it's uh, appliances or food products, uh, housing, uh, in terms of the lumber and other aspects, you know, that's all going to get so much more expensive. And those that are going to have to bear the brunt of that are those that are already struggling, those that are most vulnerable to those types of challenges and shocks. So talking about those who are most vulnerable, one of the big concerns of voters that we found is whether Social Security and Medicare will be funded. We know that the funding will run out in 2036, which is about a decade from now. We also know that the amount of money that comes in from the payroll tax currently would only pay about 77 percent of what we need. So the question is, what do we do? Do we reduce the benefits by 23 percent? Do we change the retirement age? Do we raise taxes? Or do, like the Republicans say, eliminate Social Security? Well, that would be absolutely devastating. And I mean, I think about this, my mom and my dad, both on Social Security, Medicare, dependent upon that for most of their you know, their income and, and ability to pay their bills right now. And so many seniors on fixed incomes. I mean, I, I think a very tangible, practical effort, you know, is legislation that we've been trying to push for called Social Security 2100. So this what would, would that do? For instance, right now, uh, you know, in terms of the payroll tax, caps out just a little above $168,000. What this would do is that it would bring that back in for those um, Americans that are earning over $400,000. You know, so the wealth Wealthiest Americans that they would so have to pay. In other words, pay. if you earn between 168 and 400,000, how much you pay him wouldn't change. It wouldn't change, but if you're but earning after 400,000, correct, that the payroll tax would come back in place, and this is something that would address the solvency challenges that we're facing with Social Security and be able to try to make sure that that is something that'll be there, not just for my parents as they're going through, but future generations. But the $400,000 cap, would that be just income or would it also include 
um, interest income, um, investment income, things like that, total amount of money that you have or just to the money you earn from, from working? So that part of it is payroll. There have been some other ideas that there might be other sources, uh, you know, as we're thinking through how to think through broader wealth challenges that we're facing. Uh, as we see, you know, we live in the time of the greatest amount of inequality in American history. So we're looking at those different options, but this idea was just uh, focused in on, the, on that payroll tax. But if the Republicans were to take control of the Senate, which is a possibility, or the Republican presidential candidate wins, won't there be an effort to roll back Social Security, which is what I just looked at the, uh, the numbers. 175 of the 222 members of the House Republican Study Committee favor eliminating Social Security. Which is so terrifying. I mean, this is something, you know, we've seen how Social Security was able to dramatically drop poverty amongst seniors in America over the past few decades. Uh, you know, this is such an incredibly important foundation to be able to create a sense of dignity and decency for people who've worked over the course of their lives. So yes, you know, when I hear the Republicans talking about gutting Medicare, gutting Social Security, you know, I remember I was trying to pass legislation that would give everyone on Medicare vision, hearing, dental coverage. I mean, who needs that more than seniors, right? But the Republicans in Congress just immediately immediately squashing those types of efforts for us to be able to push forward on those types of benefits for seniors. I wonder what your reaction was uh, this past week to the comments that were made by uh, John Kelly, who was former President Trump's longest serving chief of staff, where he said that he had praised some actions that were done by Adolf Hitler and that he, quote, fit the definition of a fascist. Yeah. Yeah, look, I, I didn't have a chance to, to read through it all, but I saw some of the reporting. And I mean, I think all of us should wholeheartedly be able to say, you know, there should be absolutely no praise or uh, desire to be able to replicate anything so, of Adolf Hitler. So if the president, if, if Trump became the president again, and if he were to try to use the military or the Justice Department to go after people he thinks are disloyal, um, what would you do if you were in the Senate? I mean, well, would you try to impeach him? Would you try to stop him? What could you do? Well, first and foremost, uh, you know, if I am in the U.S. Senate, I would try to use uh, my vote to be able to stop the appointments of people that I think would be dangerous to our country. You know, this isn't just about a president. We're talking about the president's ability to choose Supreme Court justices, uh, the cabinet officials, and others. Um, and I would have a vote in that. I would be one of 100 what votes. What about if he tried to use the military against his enemies, against people he thinks are disloyal? Yes, no, absolutely. I mean, that's the kind of action that I, I hope we can stand up. You know, certainly impeachment is one option. but other types of oversight, other types of tools. I certainly want to use every tool at my disposal to be able to protect our democracy. You talked about the Supreme Court. Should there be term limits for the Supreme Court? Should there be re retirement ages for the Supreme I, Court? I think it makes sense. I mean, I'm, I'm supportive of some ideas out there. Actually, there's some bipartisan support for that, for term limits at 18 years, which would provide every president more predictability to be able to choose two Supreme Court justices each term. Um, so I, I think that that's something that I'd be supportive of. The first and foremost issue, though, right now is about having a code of conduct, an ethics code for the Supreme Court. You know, the idea that they can just make decisions for themselves. You know, I'm somebody that introduced legislation that would ban members of Congress, senior government officials, Supreme Court justices, and federal judges from owning and trading individual stocks, for instance. You know, we're making decisions that have huge implications. We should make sure and to assure the American people that we're not trying to profit off of this. So we have only about 30 seconds left. I was wondering, should there be term limits for the House and the Senate? I'm open to that as well. Uh, I would say if we could do that in a package that includes uh, campaign finance reform, ending gerrymandering, because the main goal is you want members of Congress, senators that are responsive to the people. So if you're not fixing some of the underlying problems of of campaign finance and gerrymandering and other aspects, you know, having term limits would just kind of rotate through quickly, more quickly, you know, people who are still not up to the level what it is that our country deserves. So I would want it as part of a broader package. And is there a number that you have? Um, not as much. Um, I think, again, 18 is something that's been considered, which would be three terms in the Senate, nine terms in the House of Representatives. Um, so, you know, there okay. could be some sort of parity on that front. Thank you so much. We'll have to leave it right there for now. 
But up next, Republican Curtis Bashar. Businessman Curtis Bashaw is the Republican candidate for senator from New Jersey. And I want to welcome you here again. But I want to start talking about tax policy. So Donald Trump has been flirting with the idea of eliminating the income tax totally and instead relying on income from tariffs that we charge around the, around the world to fund the government. Is this an idea whose time has come? Or how do you feel about it? Well, I think that uh, often one-size-fits-all tax policies can be uh, problematic if they're not thought through carefully. Uh, I believe less taxes is a better policy than more taxes, and I think that's one way that we grow our economy. I don't think we can spend our way to prosperity or tax our way to fiscal health, so I really like the idea of tax cuts. Uh, I understand with tariffs that we, we want to create a level playing field with some trading partners that maybe aren't trading uh, fairly, uh, but across the board tariffs could lead to effectively a, a tax increase on consumers. So you would say, so in other words, you would partially favor some tariffs like on China but you wouldn't favor tariffs as the whole way to fund the government. I think that that's a, a, a big change that we would have to digest. Obviously, uh, the tax uh, cuts that we had in, in, in the early administration are expiring, and there's going to be a big conversation in the Senate next year. And I, I just think that less taxes is going to boost the economy and help us grow and defeat inflation. We can't uh, spend our way to prosperity or regulate our way to growth or, in, as I said earlier, tax our way to fiscal health. Well, one of the taxes that's expiring is the SALT tax, the deduction of state and local taxes. It's been difficult to get um, repeal of that through both the House and Senate. If you had to vote on it, would you vote to repeal SALT? I would absolutely vote to repeal SALT. New Jersey is 49th in what we get back from the federal government, yet we're the third or fourth largest contributor. We're called a donor state, and we need to uh, give relief to New Jerseyans, and getting rid of that cap would be very helpful. So another economic concern is Social Security, which expires in 2036. Now, the issue is that we're only going to be taking in about 77 percent of the money we need from the payroll tax, which now funds it. So what would your solution be? Would you say reduce the, the, reduce the benefits by 23 percent? Would you change the retirement age? Would you increase taxes? Or as many Republicans say, just eliminate Social Security. Uh, I do not think that we should eliminate Social Security. I think uh, one of the reasons I'm running uh, as an outsider and a business person and somebody who's worked across the aisle with Democrats and Republicans is that we need people to actually address this issue. Our fiscal health, we have $34 trillion in debt. We are spending ourselves, our kids and our grandkids uh, into a real problem. So to tackle something like Social Security, it's a contract with the people that have been involved in it, they're relying on that for their retirement. But we can look uh, 20 years ahead and we can talk about, you know, kids born who are 15 and 16 who aren't in that contract. Clearly, life expectancy has gone up uh, more than the retirement age. So would you eliminate Social Security for people who haven't entered the system yet? Not at all. I would just look at tweaking it. Uh, so that maybe are we talking about higher taxes? Or are we talking about high, lo, high, larger? Or, I mean, retirement age. I mean, how would I think fund? retirement age is something that could be looked at for the next generation because we're living longer. So that's just a common sense potential solution down the road. So if you're 15 or 16, road. instead of retiring at 65 or 67, whatever the number is now, maybe at 70, maybe at 75. Yeah, something like that you could talk about. I think that we uh, need to think about uh, means testing it for people that are very well off. I think there's a lot of things that in a bipartisan way, if we are not afraid to talk about it because the uh, you get, you know, uh, pigeonholed as being against Social Security if you talk about uh, a reform. But to me, it's, 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 it's a sacred trust that we have in our country. It was bipartisan legislation uh, that was passed together as a safety net uh, for our retirees, and I would not eliminate it. So is it realistic to talk about increasing the payroll tax so that people pay more towards their Social Security, or is that a non-starter for you? 
Uh, I think when you get into a bipartisan negotiation to solve a program as important as Social Security, you have to be willing to have an open mind about the different levers that you could uh, push to make that system solvent. So I wonder what your reaction was to comments made this week by um, John Kelly, who was uh, former President Trump's longest serving chief of staff. And he said that he had praise for some of the things that Adolf Hitler did, but also that he, Trump, fits, and I quote, the definition of a fascist. What was your reaction to that? Uh, I think the rhetoric in our politics is getting to the point uh, where it's, it's exhausting for voters. You know, I'm running for United States Senate in New Jersey. To me, uh, I want to make New Jersey uh, better off than it is. I'm running against Andy Kim, who you've talked to, and we're discussing real policy issues. I think calling each other names, uh, beating each other up is, is not the way uh, to uh, solve problems for America. And I, I wish the rhetoric would turn back to the policies, and that's what we should be focused on as we get ready to vote. But some of the part of the reason for that discussion was the fact that the former president had said that he might call in the National Guard or use the Justice Department to go after people he considered to be disloyal to the United States. And so my question to you, as if you were to be elected to the Senate, would that would you be okay with that? If him, you know, using the military or the Justice Department to go after the disloyal, or would you try to do something to stop it? Look, I uh, am loyal to my country, uh, to the Constitution of the United States. And I'll tell you this, Marcia, when my party's right, I'm going to support them. And when my party's not right, I'm going to stand up to it. I'm an independent person. I'm Curtis Bashaw running for United States Senate. And uh, that's how I would approach this sort of thing. So is it right for him to try to use the military against his enemies? Uh, I, it, it sounds like the military should be used uh, for foreign wars, not for internal disputes. And what about the Justice Department? I don't think we should be weaponizing our institutions, any of them. Uh, and that's part of the distrust that's coming from extreme rhetoric on both sides of the aisle that are breaking down trust. And we need to restore trust by having common sense business people, centrists who want to go to Washington and get things done. So the Palestinian Authority is trying to downgrade the status of Israel at the United Nations. I wonder how you feel about that. Good idea, bad idea? Look, I think Israel is uh, the only democracy in the Middle East. Israel is our friend and ally. I support Israel's right to defend itself and its right to win. Uh, there was a terrible terrorist attack uh, that hit Israel. Hamas is trying to create a moral equivalency. This is after taking billions of dollars of our aid, digging tunnels and hiding under their own citizens. Uh, they have, uh, I don't think there's a moral equivalency and I'm not uh, into the idea of recognizing them in that way. We have about a minute left. Should there be changes to the Supreme Court? Uh, I don't believe so. I mean, there are some people have said that there should be term limits. Other people have said there should be a retirement age. Uh, look, I believe that if we start to uh, change the number of justices, or I don't want to think about a justice uh, who's worried about what lobbying firm they are going to go to after they have a term limit. We want justices that are going to be blind and true to the well, what Constitution. What about a retirement age? Like, what if you say that you could retire, you have to retire at, say, 65 or 70? Look, I think competency is an important quality, and we all need to make sure that we're fit for office and, and whoever is running, but I'm not sure that you should time it out by a particular age. Okay, well, we'll have to leave it there for now. Thank you so much. And Thanks, Marcia. I wish you good luck. But our conversation with both candidates continues right after the show on our streaming channel, CBS News, New York.